Good afternoon, internet. Um, I just wanted to go through uh, this little patch that I've made. It's basically a tape emulator. Um, I thought it'd be a fun thing to build in VCV and I guess just like show how such a thing can be done. There are plenty of ways you could do this. This is just one way that I thought would be a fun way to do it. If you've got any ideas about how you would do it, then please uh, comment and let me know. What I've got here to demonstrate this is just a few chords playing a saw wave pad. And it sounds like this. And the way I am making this sound, as you can see, just up here with the modules, uh, I've got a clock. It's running an ADDR sequencer from Bog Audio. That is controlling the uh, movement from one chord to the other in chord key from impromptu. They're being merged into a polyphonic signal, which is then controlling a VCO, uh, the volume of which is being controlled by an ADSR envelope. And then it's just going through a light bit of filtering courtesy of the VCV filter. All of that is going into this Venom patch bay just to sort of uh, declutter some of the cables. And that signal is coming out over here. That signal is going straight into a frequency shifter. So I'm just going to unmute this and I'm going to bring in the tape effect and... I've got these macro controls here, um, courtesy of Mind Meld, and I'll just bring in some of these things and then I'll explain what everything is doing. All right, so let's have a listen. So I'm just going to turn this down a bit. So what's really going on here is the frequency shifter is doing most of the work, but it is being modulated by various things. Uh, so let's just like zoom in and have a closer look. Uh, I might actually just mute this because it's pretty annoying. <laughs> um, anyway, <clears throat> so I've got a basic LFO going into this VCA mix. And then I also have um, this uh, Wicked module, which is W-I-Q-I-D. And I'll just, actually, I'll just bring it up because it's just, it's just easier. Um, so this one has a variety of different algorith algorithms. If you hold over uh, the mouse over, you realize this is a Halverson generator. Then you've got the Dadras generator, the Lorenz generator, and the average output. But there are others. You've got the the Tommen one and the what have we got? Sorry, Thomas. And then we've got Sakaria. Sac <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> I just butchered that. Yeah, they're just random generators. That gives you this nice random signal, uh, random modulation signal. That's going into channel two here. It's a little bit more boosted uh, than the LFO. And then finally, I have a noise generator, which is modulating a variety of things. And this one's going into channel three on the VC VCA mix. And the whole mix combined is going into the mod one on the frequency shifter, which is uh, fully modulating this left knob here. And so, because I'm using uh, Patch Master from Mind Meld, I've got, as you can see, all these uh, blue dots macro controlling a lot of different things. Let's unmute it again. Bring down, bring this up, bring that down. 
So if we bring the depth right up, you can really hear and see here how much the pitch is being mangled. And then the, the rate of that mangling is also being controlled by this knob. And so when I use a noise signal to modulate the pitch, you get like a, a jitter kind of effect, which is what you want for a tape emulation. But you also want that sort of like warbling pitch shift. All right. Um, so I'll just mute this again. All of that is coming out of the pitch shifter into a compressor set to tube, and it's being fairly significantly compressed. And that signal is being sent down here into this VCA. Uh, and the reason for that is because I want to modulate the volume signal with more noise. And that noise is coming out of the pink noise into this VCA, out of the VCA, into an offset. And the reason I do that, uh, this is just a little tip for those who are, I guess, new to the way things work in modular. But if I bring this signal in here, you see the noise is bipolar, um, which means uh, it's going up and below the neutral signal line. Um, probably didn't explain that that well. But the point is, is that if it goes through the offset and I bring the offset in, what you're getting is that that signal gets shifted up. And the reason why that's important is if, if I bring it down, you'll hear, oh, let's just bring the, the volume back in. So if I bring the offset down, the volume, and you can see on the scope, the volume just goes to nothing. And you can see if I bring the volume on the, the reason I have the VCA here is to control the amount of modulation and the offset is to control where that modulation happens, so to speak. So if I bring the offset up, it brings the whole signal up, right? Let's bring that back down. And that VCA is being controlled by this grit knob up here. So yeah, that's just like, I think, um, a handy sound design tip in general is that when you modulate the output volume uh, of a signal with noise, you get a pretty interesting texture. It like really breaks up the signal. Cool. So that's the purpose of that. But then <clears throat> that signal comes out of this VCA and it goes into this mixer. And then I'm also uh, into this mixer. I also have from this filter or through this filter, I've got two other noise sources, a violet noise and a blue noise. And they are slightly low pass filtered uh, just to take a bit of that sharp edge off and then I've got one going into the left channel and one going into the right channel of these two separate inputs <clears throat> so I can modulate the volume of them separately and they're just there for like a hiss so if I bring the, the hiss knob up which is basically just controlling these two get a bit of that tape hiss And if I really wanted to take this further, I could modulate that hiss in the same way I'm modulating uh, with this grit knob, just to give it, just to break up the sound, because as it stands, it's only breaking up uh, the synth sound, not the noise sound. 
But I think that's all right. Like, you could do that, and it could be interesting, and, you know, whatever. But I think for this purpose of, of hiss, you don't really need that. Just bring the hiss down a bit, and the grit down a bit. Um, and so, from the mixer, that's all just going into another compressor, and this time an optical compressor. And then it's just going out uh, uh, into this Venom patch bay, which is coming out of this patch bay up here. Probably didn't need to have the patch bay, but again, it just neatens things up. And as I said, I've got the Mind Meld Patch Master. Um, so these macros are controlling various things. On this bottom one, I have it's called Comp. Let's just bring it up. And that's just like controlling the intensity of the compressor, but it's actually controlling multiple uh, parameters. And if you look at the two compressors, you'll see what's happening when I bring the knob up. It just gives a bit of extra oomph. And there's, I've got these other two knobs here, which are controlling the mix and the time of the frequency shifter. And the reason for that uh, is because you get like a chorus effect when you let the dry signal through and you change the timing of the wet signal. So let's just try that. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and there's one more parameter I haven't talked about here, just the stereo knob. And that is controlling this VCA here, which is another LFO, uh, which is modulating here, the right hand knob, only a little bit though. But if I bring it up, get a really good stereo spread. So that's kind of it. Um, as always with BCV, you could take this so much further, you could go <laughs> real deep and just keep adding to this signal chain. Um, but I just wanted to make like a pretty basic kind of tape emulation. And I think that that's what I've done. But I think to demonstrate it uh, in another way, I might uh, cut away and uh, bring in from Ableton like a VST and we can send this signal through it. All right, let's do that. All right, so I've just removed the pad playing the chords from the top. And now I've got a sequence playing just on the Ableton analog synth. It's a very basic sequence and it sounds like this. And we're just gonna bring in these other elements. There's already the hiss that we talked about. We can bring that down. Let's just bring all of these knobs down and we'll bring them in slowly. Firstly, I'll bring the mix of the frequency shifter up you can already hear it affect the signal. Let's bring the comp up. And let's bring the depth in. So yeah, I often find uh, the thing about tape emulations is that they often sound better on uh, 
pretty basic instruments, so just like a saw wave or a piano. Um, and they don't sound that great on like complex sounds. Um, so let's let's try it with the piano. Okay, so now I have some piano chords playing on the Spitfire Audio Felt Piano, which sound like this. <laughs> They're very affected. So it's these kind of simple sounds that I think work best. Um, but you could use it on anything, really. You could even chuck a drum beat on it, it'd be fine. Um, I mean, look, this, this tape emulation is probably not going to be as good as some of the more like bespoke ones. Uh, like uh, Sign Vibes, uh, stat Stator, and uh, what is it? Neo Warble. Is that what it's called? What's it called? Yeah, Neo Neold. Terrible name. Uh, <laughs> Warble. Um, but I think that in a pinch, if you need some light tape emulation, I reckon this is going to do the job. It's nice for choruses as well. And you can really destroy the signal. So yeah, that's going to do it. I uh, just wanted to run through that. Hopefully you got something out of it. Yeah, let me know what you think, how you feel about it, any tips or ideas how you would change it. Just a quick note though, I do find that uh, this frequency shifter from uh, Surge, the Surge collection, is probably the the only one that I found that really did the trick. There are others, but a lot of them aren't polyphonic and they just sound a bit different. If you really wanted to build a sort of uh, broken tape kind of sounding synth in VCV, you could easily do it as well by modulating the pitch of an actual oscillator as well. So there's like a million ways you can go about this stuff. This is just one way. So yeah, hope you enjoyed that and I'll catch you next time.